Okay. I require keybinds. I thought I had done this before. Apparently not. So what I need is to set a rally point. And I'm going to do that to R. R. So now I can just hit R. Tell them all to stand the fuck over here. Do nothing. Well, I have to go back into RPG mode to do that. Okay, I'm going to set you guys to passive mode. And I'm going to go in here and do this shizzle. And I will never say that anymore. Ever. Hello, I have a shotgun. And that's the new combat system, folks. <laughs> that is all this new combat system is about. I'm going to go in here all Rambo style. Shotgun. And it is a shotgun. You can hear... You can hear the shotgun racking sound effect. Got your ass knocked on your ass! What the hell does that even mean? Stop giving me food. Start giving me swag. Alright. You guys can wait here. Jump! Swordmaster. I remember when you guys gave me trouble. Oh, hi there. Now, granted, these guys are 48 levels below me, and I'm using Mark 11 gear on them as a vice admiral. Which, I'm pretty sure you have to be to use Mark 11 gear, but that's besides the point. You know what? I like you... See, there's two Klingons there, and I like they're kind of stupid, so I'm just going to let the others kill them. Dumbasses. Okay, transmit data. See, Pran, this is how you do something. You actually put your hands on the control panel. We can upload these records to our computers for analysis, Captain, but it will take some time. You and the away team will need to defend the core until the download is complete. Alrighty then. How we doing? Is everyone okay? Everyone's good? Good. Did it da 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 stand there. We've downloaded the data, sir. I recommend that we get it to Starfleet Intelligence as soon as possible. Captain, sensors indicate several Klingon ships inbound. If we leave now, we can be gone before they arrive. The ship can depart as soon as the away team beams up. Depart system. And that is hide and seek. Yes. That is hide and seek in its entirety. I'm not even fucking kidding. <laughs> See, what is this? 
pulse wave assault. Yeah, that's what the shotguns are called. They're called pulse waves, but they're shotguns. Nobody is being fooled. Do not be deceived. Dual snipers are kind of less... Like, normally I would go dual snipers. I might go, like, if I ever do, like, straight-up RPG mode, I'll probably do dual, dual snipers. Because the recharge mo the recharge time is way less. But... In shooter mode, dual snipers is kind of impractical. You want to go with something that you can use for crowd control, and you want to go with whatever gun you're going to use as your main weapon. And for me, that combination is a sniper rifle and a shotgun. It's kind of mundane in a Star Trek game to be using a sniper rifle and a shotgun. I don't want to use a sniper rifle. I don't want to use a shotgun in a Star Trek game. I want the phaser to be fucking useful. Anyways. Hail Starfleet. Well done. Starfleet will analyze the data from the listening post. With luck, there will be something there that will help us in our fight against the Klingons. And I need to pick one of these to get rid of, so I'll take the energy dampening armor. <sighs> so yeah, there you go. Really, let's see, what what the hell is this? Mark IV? Get rid of that shit. Really quick and dirty. Hey. I consigned you to the replicator. Consigned, damn it. Uh, let's get rid of weapon batteries, because I don't ever, ever need use them, nor need to use them. I don't run an escort. I run a fragging galaxy class. So, yeah, how long was that? That's not a very long mission at all. Not at all. So let's go ahead and let's check out what's next. I'm not going to go into this mission, but I am going to see what's next. And I'm also going to give you a little bit of it, since I have so much... Since that took so fast, I'm going to give you a, a short little demonstration of the various kinds of weapons that I've, that I've acquired. You've already seen the pulse wave in action. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to the bridge. Also, I neglected to mention this earlier, but the new loading screens look fantastic, but... No matter how much you decorate it, or how much you animate it, or how fancy you make them look, nothing ever changes the fact that a load screen is a load screen, and there's an awful lot of them in this game. I appreciate the work. I really do. Whoa. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. So do I have this? Hey. Pull it out. There we go. What the hell? Bust out your gun! Okay, let's push to talk. There is no Vivox voice chat, which I will probably not have much occasion to use in my recordings, but when team... Shaw, get the fuck out of Nell's chair. Uh, when team... What the hell am I seeing? This merits investigation. What? Pran! You're looking like you're working. And your fingers are actually touching the console you're supposed to be working at. I... Uh, so I was talking about the guns, right? Right. Something that won't make my mind cave in. That's push to talk. There we go. So you've already seen the pulse wave in action. So I'll switch to the sniper rifle. 
and I was talking about the sniper rifle in diplomatic orders, and basically it fires... It's one of the fastest uh, single-shot weapons I've encountered so far. It's definitely the most satisfying of the rifle weapons, because, you know, wh where you point a shot, it goes. It's not like the uh, full-auto rifle, which is... Fuck, which is false fucking advertising. It's not full auto in any way, shape, or form. It's a burst fire rifle with a slightly longer fire mode that fires a volley of rounds. That's all the uh, full auto rifle is. It's not full auto in any sense of the word. And uh, the same thing with the assault minigun, which you saw briefly, and I will show you in greater detail here. And he's actually holding it correctly now. Cool. So, uh, entering C while in shooter mode will activate your scope. And, uh, just like uh, in RPG mode, when you're crouched like this, you will do extra damage, but you're, it's, you can't dodge as well. There's a new laser sight. There are unique laser sights depending on which uh, weapon type you're using, which type of sniper rifle, Tetrion, Polaron, etc. Uh, and I think that's about it. You've already seen both firing modes of the shotgun. The secondary firing mode is amazing for crowd control. The secondary firing mode of this shotgun will save your ass. Uh, many times. In fact, it's pro you're going to be you're going to be seeing a lot of me just running straight up to a group of enemies and just, you know, unloading the secondary fire and then just proceeding to uh, shotgun the hell out of them. And yet yeah, again, it's called the pulse wave. It's not it's not actually called a shotgun, but it's a shotgun. Even even the cryptic dev said this is an energy shotgun. So that's what I'm going to call it. So, uh, switching, uh, between RPG... When you're switched to shooter mode, whenever you, like, access your inventory or anything like that, it'll automatically put you into RPG mode and let go of your mouse so you can do stuff, which is great. Uh, I'm gonna switch the handgun here, and I'm going to bring the minigun out here. Now, here's the minigun that you saw briefly. You didn't see it very well, because, uh, Revan covered it up, because he, he's a fucking glory hound. He's a scene-stealing bastard. But, um, basically this is what it does. It fires... It's like the full auto rifle. It just does heavier damage. And, for some reason, a, it's a directed energy weapon that has to spool up. Which makes about as much sense as a directed energy weapon where you have to rack shots, like a, with a shotgun. So, it sounds cool, but... I still don't know, but, um, it is called the Assault Minigun. It doesn't fire, it doesn't have an automatic fire in any way, shape, or form, just like the full auto rifle doesn't. Uh, it, the secondary fire is essentially, it fires a lot. Now, the advantage of this thing, and the full auto rifle, is that you can actually sweep the shot. So, give me a second to let this recharge. Three, two, one. Is you can actually sweep the shots if you're in shooter mode and hit multiple targets. This is only really useful when you're talking about low level mobs, though. You don't want to do this in higher level mobs. You especially don't want to do it against the Borg unless you want all of them coming after you. And so, uh, the other weapon I wanted to show off is. The Humble Pistol, which, strangely, this game now has shotguns. It ha now has miniguns. It now has burst-fire rifles. But for some bizarre reason, the pistol is the most satisfying-feeling weapon so far. And I'm not talking about in terms of damage. I'm talking talking about in terms of the feel of it. Yeah, there's something about the the effect animation and the sound and the fact that this thing will fire about as fast as you can click the mouse that feels really good and you're probably going to see me using this a lot 
Um, because I'm pretty much going to enjoy it as much as I possibly can, because by the time we get to the Romulan missions, it's going to be worthless. So, yeah. Unfortunately, switch to the phaser. The phaser fires much faster now. It's still useless. <laughs> Making it fire faster has not changed the fact that the phaser in this game is useless, which is heresy. That is oh, that is terrible. Cause this the phaser is the iconic weapon of Star Trek. You know, the like it's it's the phaser is to Star Trek what the lightsaber is to Star Wars. It's one of those iconic sci fi weapons, and the fact that it's utterly useless in this game. It's like, I remember the phaser from Elite Force. The phaser from Elite Force was awesome. And if you're going to go, like, the shooter route with miniguns and stuff... Like, I like I tweeted earlier while I was tr getting myself used to the combat scheme. It's like, it's all getting awfully Elite Force up in here, and it is. So if you're, if you're going to start, you know... What I would like to see, and this is probably never going to happen... Is if they approach the phaser the same way that they did in Elite, that the developers who made Elite Force approached the phaser in that game. And uh, how that was is you have the phaser, it has uh, two settings, primary and secondary fire. It has a low setting and a high setting. Um, it's supposed to be stun and kill, I guess, but both of them, both settings kill the shit out of everything anyways, just the high setting vaporizes them. Uh, you could use it as a tool in Elite Force, I believe. In Elite Force 2, actually. You could cut open... Th you could weld open things. You could weld them shut with a phaser. It was awesome. Uh, it had a recharging power supply so that you never had to worry about ammo. You never have to worry about ammo in this game already. But the great thing about the phaser was that it would fire until it ran out of energy and had to recharge. Like, it, ha it had a set amount of charge... And uh, once it exhausted, you'd have to just sort of leave it alone and let it build up energy again. But uh, it was essentially fire as long as you held down the button. And uh, that was great. Like, I used to use the phaser all the time in Elite Force. It was a really fun... It, made, it wasn't the best weapon in the game, but it was really fun, and if you were good enough with it, it would see you pass some pretty tough situations. You know, it, was, it was that go-to weapon that you always had on you in case of emergency. If you needed to like pull out something that you knew was going to vaporize somebody really quick, you pulled out your trusty phaser and just had at it, and it was awesome. So that's what I hope... That's something that I hope to see in this game at some point. I know I never will. It'll never happen. The phaser's going to be worthless. But it's just such a shame. It's such a shame to let that to let what is an iconic weapon go to waste for a shotgun or a minigun. Both of these things were in Elite Force as well. I, I what, what was it called in Elite Force 1? The Tetrion Disruptor? That's what it was called in Elite Force 1, the Her the Herosian Gatling gun that you carried around. And uh, there was the, uh, like, the organic sort of thing you got on this Ethereum ship, is that what they were called? And it kind of acted like a shotgun. And, of course, uh, in Elite Force 2, you, they just straight up set, gave you, like, a phaser shotgun in that game. I think you got it from Corbin or something. Was that his name? I don't know. It's been a it's been a long time. Some some sort of wharf clone that they were using as one of the main characters of Elite Force, Elite Force Two. Anyways, I've yammered on long enough about Elite Force Two. There's uh, some of the weapons. Uh, quick little demonstration of the abilities, and I keep hitting the push to talk key because I kept changing them back and forth. Uh, so how you select your abilities on the tray? Because you're unable to use your mouse while you're in shooter mode, and in fact, you're probably not going to be see me using shooter mode all that much. Um, I'm probably going to be doing most of this from RPG mode from now on, because really, 
the way with how the things fire faster and I'm hitting the push to talk key again and the fact that I'm able to use my mouse to click on like healing items quickly and such which is a bear when you're in shooter mode it's not it's, it's not undoable it's not it's just annoying you know shooter mode makes using your powers annoying but you can control where your shots are going you can aim you can throw grenades over obstacles and you can duck behind cover easier and pick your shots uh, whereas in RPG mode, you can't do any of that shit, but you do have your mouse free to use all your abilities whenever you see fit without having the ha to go to the hassle of having to hit the T button. And I hit that button by mistake. Okay, where is the button? Oh, that was R, wasn't it? All right. Let's remap that so I can show you. Where is T? Crew attack my target. Scroll up. I don't think G is used for anything right now in shooter mode. So, what, like, the main way you switch between abilities as you use either the T or I think it was the R button that I reassigned, but whatever, uh, to change the three, what the three mouse keys are mapped to. Right, left, and center mouse buttons. And uh, as soon as you activate them, it immediately switches back to your uh, weaponry so that you can continue firing and keep fighting. This is sounds this look sounds easy. It sounds like something that'll be easy to do. It's not. Like when you're in a really desperate situation, it's you find yourself fumbling with these controls and I can see a lot of optimization coming to this coming to the the way the shooter uh the shooter mode controls because in all honesty, it could use a little bit of optimization. Uh it's a nice addition. It's a, it's a nice addition. Brings a little bit more tactical thought to the gameplay, especially now that the shields have been so brutally nerfed um, to the point of making missions like cutting the cord frustrating as hell to play. And again, I don't have some pissant shield. I have, like, it's like the second to last shield you can craft. It's one of the best craftable sh personal shields in the game. What was it again? Personal covariant shield? No, it's just a personal shield. Might as well be, though. With the strength that thing had. And I say had. And I mean had. But yeah, you're going to see me keep hitting push to talk. It's annoying the shit out of me. Uh, you're going you're gonna to be seeing me using uh, RPG mode a lot. And uh, I think that's about it for now. This is still going to be a little bit... This is still going to feel like a little bit of a short one. I've spent more time... I think I've spent more time talking about the various... The shooter mode in Season 4 than I have about the actual mission. Wow. Well, they're going to get shorter, and they're going to get faster, and there's going to be a lot of them, and we're going to go through them pretty damn quickly. So, uh, until that next time, I will see you guys later. So, later.